Hey guys and girls, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Hugh C. Fishing. Today's video this is going to be the second video of a two-part uh, series talking about preparing and practicing for a tournament that you have coming up. So if you guys want to watch the first video, which is talking about preparing for a tournament before you even leave home to go to the lake, that's going to be at the top right. But this video is going to be talking about practicing for a tournament. When you're at the lake, right before the tournament, what you need to be doing, how much time you should be spending doing what, make, catching fish, shaking fish off, all this different stuff. So guys, stay tuned. So this is going to be very, very complicated. I'm going to try to break it down as best I can. But all this practice is going to depend on the type of lake you're at. Um, some places it's going to be a beat down. Some places it's going to be a real grinder tournament. You need, you're, you're hoping to get five bites a day. Some of these lakes you might never have been to before. Some of these lakes are going to be your home lake. So all this is really going to depend on the type of lake it is. So I'm going to kind of talk about a couple different approaches that I do. And hopefully you guys can match it to the lake that you guys are going to be fishing in your tournaments. So there's a bunch of different things that I'll think about whenever I'm going to practice for a tournament. And one of them is going to be how much time I have to practice on these tournaments. Also, how much time I should spend on these tournaments. Um, talking about time you have, like some days you have a whole week to practice for these tournaments. Some days you have the day before the tournament. Some days you only have the weekend before. So you really have to narrow down your approach to uh, how many days you have. And it's really going to change on exactly what you should be doing during practice uh, if you have one day or a whole week. In contrast to that, that's also going to be how much time you should spend. So if you're fishing a Tuesday night tournament, you're really, I mean, I probably wouldn't even practice for more than an hour before the tournament. I would go out the day before, the weekend before going to practice, shaking fish off, stuff like that. It's not a real big money tournament. Then you start to get into the weekend series, the BFL kind of stuff. Some people practice the day before and the weekend before. Uh, I'd call that pretty good. Uh, and then you start to get in the opens, the Toyota series and stuff like that, where guys are spending, some guys are spending a whole month there practicing for a tournament. Um, I think you should spend at least three days there. I spend about a week practicing for my opens. Um, but it's all really going to depend on how much money you have into it, how much money you can get out of it, and kind of the, kind of the goal of it. Like, to me, I want to spend as much time as I can fishing in a, fish, practicing for an open so I can qualify for the Elite Series. I want to make sure that I'm turning over every single rock, um, making sure that I'm leaving nothing behind when I'm practicing for a tournament to try to win. So I want you guys to be thinking about this whenever I'm talking about the different techniques uh, or different ways that I'm going to be practicing at these lakes. If you've been there before, if it's a new place, how much time you have and how much time you should spend practicing. And then I'll, I'll start to break it down. I'll start to break it down now. And the first thing that I'm going to be looking at once I get to a lake is I've got this idea in my head based on all this stuff that I prepared at home, the ideas that I have. And I'm gonna get to a lake, and depending on the type of lake it is, uh, whether it's a grinder tournament, like if it's gonna be a beat down, or if it's a place where I have to be fishing the whole time, a place like Florida where I'm not gonna be graphing much, I have to be fishing to find the area, or if it's a place like Chickamauga or something like that, the Tennessee River, where I have to be graphing all day. This is kind of determine uh, what exactly I'm gonna be doing. And I want you guys to be thinking about this before, while you're practicing. Uh, if it's gonna be, if it's a TVA tournament, a Tennessee River Lake. Uh, you and you need to be fishing offshore to be winning. You obviously should be spending a lot of time of your a lot of time of your day graphing to try to find the winning school. And if it's a place like Florida, obviously you can spend some time graphing. But for the most part, you're gonna be fishing up shallow, fishing in the grass, trying to figure out exactly where the fish are and where the bigger fish are at. Once I figure out what type of lake I'm gonna be fishing, what type of tournament I'm gonna be fishing, uh, then I'm gonna start to figure out what I should be doing with my days. Um, obviously it's going to depend on if you have one day, zero days, or a whole week practicing. But if when I have a week to practice, uh, I'm going to take what I learned from doing my preparation, which is knowing the patterns, knowing the baits, <clears throat> and knowing the areas that I'm going to be targeting to try to win the tournament based on like previous winning areas. I'm going to be spending some time there. Um, obviously that's going to be, that's going to be my first day of practice is going to where everybody was winning. I'm going to try to do exactly what they were doing. Um, in that time of year to try to replicate it to figure out exactly what I need to be doing um, Because I know it's been a proven area. I don't have I don't have to worry if I'm in the wrong part of the lake doing something wrong I know that there were winning fish there and if I'm doing something wrong I need to figure it out pretty quick um, So the first day actually the first two days I'm actually gonna spend in those winning areas of the lake and I'll try to hit two or three of them Two to three to four in a day depending on how close they are and how big the body of water is um and I'm going to do this two days in a row because 
I'm gonna try to do it, or not two days in a row, I'm gonna do it at least two days during practice to make sure that I'm hitting it on different conditions. Could have been a really bad post front day, could have been a really bad pre front day, I don't really know, but I wanna make sure that I'm there during all times of the day, all conditions to make sure that I'm not missing out on the winning fish where the winning fish once were. So that's gonna be one of, that's what I'm gonna be doing two of the days. Another one of the days I'm gonna be running the rest, rest of the water, rest of the lake, trying to figure out these places that weren't classified as winning areas, but still had some fish. I'm gonna be running those pretty quickly. Um, keep the troll motor a little high and see if I can just get bites in these areas. Maybe this is gonna be a secondary area. Based on our preparation, we might see that everybody's gonna go fish those winning areas. I don't really like spending a lot of time around other people. I don't like seeing other people catch fish. So those areas that weren't known as productive winning areas, I might be spending a lot of time in. And then I might have a couple spots in the winning areas that I might go into. So one of the days I'm gonna be going to places that aren't as well known for producing winning tournament fish, but I'm still gonna hit them just to make sure. And this goes hand in hand with uh, graphing. Like I'm gonna be graphing in the places where I think the winning fish are, or I'm gonna be fishing in the places where I think the winning fish are. So it kind of goes with both ways with graphing, graphing tournaments and uh, fishing tournaments when you're practicing. Another one of the days, probably the last day of practice. Um, I usually have a half day or the end of the last day of practice. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna be looking for what I call one fish spots. Spots where you might hit if you need one more keeper, spots you might be hitting right next to the weigh-in, the weigh-in boat, um, or check-in boat, I guess. Um, places like that where there's, there might be a release fish, something like that, but it's a, if I make one cast on it, if I stop and I have one minute to fish and I make a cast on it, that fish is gonna bite first cast. I'm gonna spend a half a day or even a full day looking for those, depending on how the rest of my practice is going. Just to make sure that if I have four fish and I want that fifth fish, I have a couple places I can stop really quick. So that's what's going to be. That's what I'm be doing the last day of practice probably. One of the one of the biggest things that people uh, argue a lot about is catching fish or shaking fish off. If it's one of those uh, grinder tournaments where you're hoping to get five fish a day, I might be shaking them off. Like a place like the Sabine River or the Red River, uh, you're hoping to get eight pounds a day probably. I'm gonna be shaking fish off. I'm probably gonna be using a uh, Texas rig, uh, put a screw lock on. I'm gonna be flipping. Shaking these fish off because I know that they're probably not going to move anywhere. I can come back the next day during the tournament and come catch them. Obviously, that needs to be a little bit different. Um, the better the better you get at fishing, the more you'll be able to tell the size of a fish based on the bite. But sometimes you won't be able to do that. Like in river situations, fish going to the current, it's really hard to tell the size of the fish. So every once in a while, you should try to set the hook on a fish. Just make sure you know the right size. Um, talking about from the preparation video that I talked about. I want to make sure that I know I'm on the right size of fish to be doing well in the tournament to get a check, top 10, or even winning the tournament. So every once in a while I do want to set the hook in these grinder tournaments to make sure that it's bass and it's the right size of fish that I need to be catching. And then going to real good lakes, places where the population of fish is huge. You can set the hook, you can set the hook here, um, make sure you're on the right size of fish. There's some smallmouth tournaments where there's millions of fish. I set the hook on every single fish possible and I don't worry about, uh, I don't have to worry about them being sore-lipped during the tournament. But I'm not gonna go fish for a whole school. If I see a school of six smallmouth, I'll probably catch one, just to make sure they're smallmouth and the right size of them. But I'm not gonna sit there and whack on them uh, all day. Same thing with like a Tennessee River Lake. Like, I'm gonna make sure that they're bass, I'm gonna make sure that they're bite, I don't know the right, know the right size of them. But I don't wanna catch them all. I wanna make sure that they're there for the tournament because odds are somebody else probably else, somebody else probably found the spot as well. If I'm up shallow in a tournament, kind of the same thing. I want to make sure that I can catch some fish in the area. If I fish practice, if I'm practicing real fast, like you can see Ben here, Ben's got the troll motor pretty high. We're just looking to cover water, catch a couple of fish. We want to make sure we can find a good area. Um, so if I can catch one or two fish going pretty quick, then I know that there's probably more fish in the area. And if I slow down, I can catch them all or catch more of them. Um, so that's kind of my take on shaking fish off versus catching fish. So guys and girls, this was my take on how to practice for a tournament. Like I said, it's gonna be different for every single tournament you're gonna be fishing, home lake, new lake, how much time you got, how much time you should spend, shaking fish off, catching. But these, these are some of the things that I do, kind of the things I think about whenever I'm pulling up to a lake to practice for the first time or like I've been to my whole life. So guys, thanks for watching.